Merry Christmas. Uh, it was about this time a year ago. Uh, in fact, it was this day a year ago that right after this service, my wife Mia and I and our, our son Jack uh, set out right after this worship service to drive over to Southern Virginia to be with uh, Mia's family for Christmas. And uh, we schemed up this really great plan that if we left here by about 6 p.m. and uh, set out on a 9 to 10 hour car ride, that we'd all be really happy on Christmas morning uh, by the time we woke up and we're sleep deprived. And after our, uh, our uh, about nine month old child at the, at the time had, had ridden about six, 500 miles or so uh, with us in the car, we thought that was a really good idea. So we set out in the car and we loaded up and uh, Jack fell asleep about an hour in and was pretty clear sailing. But if you remember Christmas last year, it was really wa- rainy. Uh, it started getting a little bit cold and uh, thankfully it never got icy. It never was snowing or anything like that, but it had been warm pre. pre- Previously, and it had gotten cold, so there's lots of fog everywhere. And so uh, that makes for really easy Christmas Eve dri- driving, doesn't it? I mean, it's kind of what you hope is going to happen when you set out on that long road trip. So uh, uh, after all of these really good ideas to leave that late at night to drive nine or ten hours, um, we, uh, we said, you know what would be the most ideal way for our firstborn son to spend his first Christmas? Well, plan A was let's let him wake up with his family all around and go right to the Christmas tree and and, and all of that stuff. It'll be just so fun. He'll be at grandpa and grandma's house. It'll just be fantastic. That was plan A. Because I'm telling you there's plan A, you know that there's also a plan B coming, right? You know, it didn't quite work out that way. In fact, we ended up spending Christmas morning in just the most special and cherished of places, and, and we have a picture of it. It was Days in in Withful, Virginia. Um, you're probably wondering, where is Withful, Virginia? That's what I would have said the day before that day, uh, because I didn't know where Withful, Virginia was, and so we, uh, that's us outside of our, our hotel room at about 6.45 Eastern time, uh, Christmas morning, and we are all just singing joy to the world at the top of our lungs, let me tell you. It wasn't quite the way we had planned out Christmas to be. Now, if you're anything like me, uh, you probably have put a couple of plans in place for this Christmas. And let me just ask you, if you will be brave for just a moment, raise your hand if at any point through the Christmas season so far, any of your shopping, your plans for parties that you've hosted or gone to, anything that you've done with family, anything that you already did today or have set up for tomorrow, let me just ask you, is anybody in this room in any way, shape, or form on to plan B with anything this Christmas season? Raise your hand. Anybody on to plan B with something? Okay, half of you are telling the truth. Half of you need to confess your lies here in just a moment. I'm really glad you're at church. You're at the right place for that. So many of us, it's like every year, it's like, let's just get Christmas right this year. Let's make it perfect just the way we planned it. And my guess is along the way, you've experienced that it doesn't always go the way that you had hoped it would. It's probably on to plan B, plan C, and so on. It doesn't exactly go the way you would have planned it. Now, just a moment ago, you heard the band uh, take us through such a beautiful rendition of Away in a Manger. And this evening, I'd like to just take a glimpse, if you will, at that wonderful Christmas carol that we're all so familiar with and sing so often. And maybe it was even one of the first songs that you ever sung as a kid or, or, or uh, something that you cherish from, from a, a distant memory as a child. But it's such a wonderful carol. I want to just take us back to that for just a moment this evening. Because if I was writing the script on how the night would have gone that Jesus would have been born, uh, away in a manger is not plan A. That is not how I would have planned it. Let's just, let's just take a look at verse 1 of Away in the Manger. Can we do that just for a moment? Just, just look at this. I think we got the lyrics here. Uh, uh, 
let me ask you, is this plan A? Is this what your parents would have drawn up for plan A for you when you were born, okay? Uh, let's just look at this. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. That's a problem. Let's go to the next line. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. Oh, that's so beautiful, so wonderful. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. It's beautiful. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the crib mattress. Uh, The little Lord Jesus asleep just where he's supposed to be, the perfectly fluffed blanket and pillow and and everything just nice. and No, he's asleep on the hay. Okay, then if we could go to verse 2 just real quickly. Here's where any parents in the room, any kids who have parents, your parents would have been upset if this would have happened because you've been working so hard, your, your, your kid is finally asleep, and then this happens. The cattle are mooing now, and it wakes up the baby, right? This is just a major problem. A couple of weeks ago, we, uh, we, a whole bunch of us went out Christmas caroling in uh, the neighborhood around our new worship location called uh, Clementine. And we were in the neighborhood, and we're going through, and we're, we're knocking on doors, and we're asking, hey, can we sing you a Christmas carol this afternoon? And, and most people said yes, but there was one house where this grandfather uh, uh, came out, and, and you could tell uh, grandfather had kind of been through the ringer. Uh, he was kind of sagging a little bit below his eyes. You know, he looked kind of tired, looked like he needed a nap. And, he, and we said, hey, uh, Merry Christmas, can we sing you a Christmas carol? And he said, actually, please don't sing a Christmas carol. The, the baby just went to sleep, and I don't want you to wake him up. Now, that was, that was wonderful that he said that, because uh, uh, you, you probably know if, if you've ever gotten your kids or uh, any, any nieces or nephews down to sleep, uh, if somebody's knocking on the door, you're like pretty much ready to accuse them of being a terrorist for potentially waking up your child, right? I, I, I would be with the grandpa and say, listen, if any of those stinking Christmas carolers wake up my kid after I've been trying to get him to sleep forever, that's going to be it, right? I mean, you can just imagine how this is not going the way that Mary and Joseph had planned this out, right? You got, you got three big problems here, right? You don't have the crib. You're laying your child in some hay. And then the cows start mooing and the baby wakes up again. I mean, can you just imagine how this, how this goes down between Mary and Joseph, right? Jesus is born. Joseph is holding the savior of the world in his arms. He hands him over to Mary. They're just having this incredible moment. And then they look at each other and say, okay, the angel didn't give us any directions for what we do now. Do you, did you hear anything of what we're supposed to do now? I don't know what we're supposed to do now. And Joseph chimes, he says, don't worry, I know. I know exactly what we need to do. The angel said we're supposed to give him the name Jesus. Okay, let's do that. Welcome, Jesus. Okay, did the angel say anything else after that, Joseph? What are we supposed to do now? And he he says, no, there wasn't anything else. Okay, let's get the crib. Let's go and wheel that on out here and lay Jesus in the crib. I don't have a crib. What do you mean you don't have a crib? We were supposed to have that in the go bag. Why isn't it in the go bag? We were supposed to have that so we could put Jesus in the crib and we'd be all good to go. Uh, We don't have the crib. Okay, uh, get the feeding trough that's over there. Bring it on over. Let's lay Jesus in the manger. Okay, let's get the... Now, Joseph, you got to clean that out first and you got to put some padding in there. Where are the blankets? Blankets, we don't have blankets. I didn't stop at Bed Bath & Beyond on the way over here, Mary. There are no blankets. I don't know what to lay them in. Okay, get the hay, put him in the hay. That's good. Okay, he's finally asleep. We're good to go. All right, we're all set. And then the cows start moving. Who let the cows in here? Now Jesus is awake. I mean, does this sound like plan A? If you were gonna write the song on how Jesus was supposed to be born, would this be how you would draw it up? I'm guessing you probably wouldn't draw it up this way. This is not plan A. This is actually really messy. This is actually not how the savior of the world we would think would make his grand entrance into our lives, into the world. And yet, this is where we see Jesus stepping into the mess of our world, willing to come as a baby with the sole purpose of redeeming you 
your family, your friends, the whole world. You see, what we see happening here is that while maybe we wouldn't have drawn it up this way, uh, and how Jesus was born and everything, maybe this isn't what plan A would have looked like. Maybe we would have written some other verses to a song like this to kind of lay out what it would have looked like for the savior of the world to be welcomed into the world. But that's actually not how it happened at all. And how beautiful is the gospel that Jesus wouldn't stay away from our mess, but actually from the moment of being born would be laid in the middle of nothing but mess. And this isn't a mistake. This isn't like God forgot about his son coming into the world. Actually, it was at the perfect time. I want you to take a look here. I think we have it up on the screen. Galatians chapter four. Verses four and five, it says this. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law. That's you and I. So that we might receive adoption to sonship, to be family. You see, This was no mistake. God didn't have to shift over to plan B when there wasn't a crib, when there wasn't some fleece blanket, when the cows started mooing. He he didn't mess up when he was announcing the birth of the Savior to to some uh, poor, uh, outcast shepherds out in the field, and and they were the first ones to, to receive that message. He didn't mess up there. And he didn't mess up in this manger. He didn't mess up in the way that he sent Jesus because Jesus was never meant to be some distant, uh, uh, unrelatable, God-like figure. Instead, Jesus, fully man and yet fully God, came to step into our mess so that he might redeem those who are in the mess so that he might make them family, sons and daughters. And might that be the focus that we have this evening as we consider the incredible gift of Jesus into our lives. Jesus steps into our mess He steps into our lives even when it's not going the way that we thought it would go. Even when we're on to plan B, plan C. Even when there's just so much going the wrong direction. Even when there's so much in our past. Even when we've been disconnected. It's it's as, as if Jesus has set this time, tonight, apart to meet you in your mess so that he might redeem you. He might, he might actually give you hope. He might actually give you new life. He might actually stir, stir a new song within you, that he might fill you with joy, even when everything else is trying to rob you of it, so that he might give you life where there isn't any. So that he might call you son and daughter. See, for Jesus to come into the world at this time that we celebrate tonight and for him to step into your world, your messy world, if we're honest with ourselves, where everything isn't going the way we had planned it, where maybe the relationships we have haven't worked out, where maybe the path of our lives didn't go the way that we thought it would, where some business adventure didn't quite make it like we thought it would, where some, somewhere along the way we became broken or 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 changed trajectory and had to adjust because it didn't go the way that we thought it would and it got messy. Perhaps that time when Jesus was born wasn't the only time set for God to do something amazing. But perhaps tonight the Lord also has set this moment for your life as a moment where he steps into your mess. 
Not to tell you what you did wrong or, or where you got to try harder or where you got to be a better Christian or where you need to do this or do that, but so that he might step into your mess and in the midst of your mess, redeem you. And give you life. And give you hope. And stir joy in your heart. And that he wouldn't just redeem you, but that he would also call you son. He would also call you daughter. You see, tonight, you might be heading off to celebrate, to, to share meals, to share presents today, tomorrow. This week, you might be traveling, seeing friends, and there's so much going on, and, and all of it is just so wonderful. But here's the question I have for you. When it's so easy to miss, and when it'd be so easy just to jump right into the next activity, the next present, the next meal, the next party, the next game, what if in this moment, just as Galatians says, but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son to redeem so that we might receive adoption as sons and daughters. What if tonight the Lord simply wants to stir his grace in your heart, no matter what your journey has looked like, no matter where you've been, no matter how often you've been here or how distant you've been or how much you struggle or are addicted or, or how much brokenness or how much success or lack of it or whatever, no matter what that journey looks like, what if tonight the Son of God simply wanted you to know this? You are loved. You are my son. You are my daughter. You don't get that picture if we write the story that goes according to plan where baby Jesus is laid down in his fleece blanket in this manger and, and nothing is disturbing the peaceful sleep and, and everything's just fine and, and there's no mess because then God stays distant but I guarantee you the Lord doesn't want to stay distant in your life. In fact, he's actually drawing you to himself this evening to be in your mess, to redeem you, and to say, you're my son, you're my daughter. No present, no meal, no no time with, with other family members or friends, no special occasions, no vacations, no, no trips, no, no, no anything else is going to be able to do what that promise of Jesus can do. So might I just pray for us this evening. Father, as we worship you this evening, we give you thanks that you sent your son Jesus at just the right time. Not to be uh, a plan B in our lives, but God, you have sent him to redeem us. So Father, I pray for each and every one of us that tonight you might stir in our hearts. that we might not miss the moment that is at hand. Jesus, you seek to call us back to yourself. So God, we trust you, we rely on you, and we ask you, Lord, Jesus, come. It's in his name that we pray. Amen.